lightnings and thunderstorms today with strong southwesterly winds to 37 miles per hour. It's a numbers game, especially for the situation that we're in. We're coming off of a high water event here. The outdoors is not a hobby. It's not our passion. It is our way of life. We make the perfect cast, slow our breathing to execute a perfect shot, spend hours researching locations and techniques. Regardless of effort, we fail. This series is not about incredible bites or trophy animals. Our goal here at Day One Outdoors is to educate our viewers, utilizing new technology to offer a different perspective. Watch as we research new areas, plan out the day, and adjust to changing conditions. If not for other experienced outdoorsmen teaching me along the way, I wouldn't have this life. I owe it to them to pass this knowledge along. I owe it to you. Join us here on Day One Outdoors, and let's learn how to become more successful in the field and on the water from day one. If we think back on when we all first started fishing, it was fun. That is why we all got started in this passion, in this sport, in this way of life that we all enjoy so much. Now, a lot of times, even in our episodes here, or us as we grow up as anglers, we start to look for the next big challenge. Well, every once in a while, we need to go back and remember that fishing is fun. And most importantly, we need to remember that someone introduced us to this sport. And that's what we're gonna do here today. We're gonna to take a family out, a mom and dad and their four kids, and show them that fishing can be fun. Now, we need this next generation to come up, not only to support our industry, but to also buy licenses to continue our way of life and continue this passion and this tradition that we have that have been passed on to us. So it's our duty to pass this information and this fun onto this next generation. We're up here at Lava Lake in the High Cascades, and the reason why we chose this lake is because of the numbers of fish that get put in here from the hatcheries. This lake is ideal for families because you're almost guaranteed success, even on days when conditions are a little bit off. Today's a little bit windy, which I'm not really too happy about. I want the kids to be comfortable. I want them to be warm, to be excited to be out here. And it's a little chilly, a little windy, but we're gonna see if we can find some spots out of the wind and keep these kids engaged. One of the most important things you can do when taking kids out on the water is keep their interest. Find ways to engage them. Have them pick out colors, scents. Ask them where they should cast. What type of bait should they be using? So today, we're just gonna target regular old rainbow trout that have been stocked here in this lake and try and show them a good day on the water. You got it? <laughs> we caught fish! That is record time you have seen boat. Which one is this? It's a rainbow. I like fishing because it's enjoyable and I want to teach them the respect for coming out here to the nature and enjoying family time. Um, we are going to try to catch all sorts of trout and just have a good time. Austin? Yeah? You think we start out trolling or fishing off the bottom? Uh, honestly, I don't know. If it marks, if it marks anything off the bottom, then we could fish off the bottom or we could go trolling. I think we're going to start out trolling and here's why. So we always want to try and find the fish first. So what I'm gonna do is I got three poles set up here, but I want you guys to all pick out your own color and your own lure. So we're gonna put those three out, okay? Okay. So who's gonna go first? I pick that rod. Which one, this one? Yes. Okay, uh -huh. which one do you right. guys want? You want that one? You want this one? Okay. Bella, you wanna pick out a color? That one right there? That one there? Okay, you wanna hold it? Careful the hooks. 
put that one on your pole for you. Bill, do you know what this color is called? It's called Misty River. It's a really good one for steelhead. And a steelhead is just an ocean going rainbow. So hopefully it works here for these rainbows. Okay, next step guys, we're gonna choose some flavors to put on there. So come on back this way. So we have one that's just called trout and kokanee, and we have one that's called shrimp. Belle, which one do you want on your plug? Uh, shrimp. Shrimp? Okay, what about you guys trout and your spinners? Trout and kokanee. Trout kokanee? We're gonna see which one catches more fish, all right? Okay. So I'm gonna get the motor ready, and then we're gonna put the lines out, and we're gonna see if we can catch some trout here, okay? I read in this magazine, and it said that um, the trout, like a lot of bass and other trout, like other smaller trout and fish. So I put it, so I put it on there because that really like, I want them to find out like, oh, it's just one of the usual nice tasting foods. Let's go get it. Get it on there? Yeah. Okay. Put it out right over this way. It's gone. Perfect. Okay, here we go. Let this one out. There we go. And yours is going to be right here. You want to sit in that seat for me? There you are. You know how uh, you're going to be able to tell when you catch a fish? It's the no, rosin you're bobbing up and down. Bam! It'll bounce really hard. It's going to go like this. It's going to go boom, 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 boom. That's when you got one. Last time I went fishing with Cody, he said he was eating a banana, but then he told us never bring bananas on the boat. This was a mistake because there would be these giant banana spiders. My mom today just told me that when they ship bananas across the whole ocean, there would be these tiny little spiders that would grow into huge ones and eat you overnight. So we were very like, I don't want to find out if that will happen. So do you think with all this gear and equipment, all this experience, all this time on the water, all this great bait that we have, that this little piece of fruit is gonna keep us from catching fish? Probably not. Oh. <laughs> you think this banana is gonna keep us from catching fish today? No, it may help us catch fish. Tell you what, what if we put this banana peel onto your hook out there? And you like that? We'll find out. What do you think it's going to take for the fish to come up and bite? I have no idea. Now let's see, we've been trolling for a little while. Have we had any bites? I don't know. Why don't you know? Were you not watching the poles? No. I'm watching the, <laughs> I was watching the poles, just none's been going off. No bites? Well, maybe we need to check, change up our technique. If these fish don't want it on the troll, that means that they don't want to chase. So we might need to slow down a little bit, maybe because of the clouds and the wind and the barometer changing a little bit, we might need to change up our technique. So I think I'm going to go over here and see if we can find a spot out of the wind that we can stay comfy and catch a few fish. Sound good? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're gonna try to find a ridge to anchor and fish on because they look like they're not wanting to chase anything. Fishfield is your one-stop shop online for the gear you need here in the Pacific Northwest and beyond. From salmon and steelhead, saltwater, trout and kokanee, even crabbing. Visit fishfield.com today to place an order with no sales tax and have the gear you need shipped fast. Fishfield.com, we have what the Northwest Outdoorsman needs. Every once in a while, a new lure comes along that catches every angler's attention. It could be because of all the irresistible colors and finishes. 
or the patented skip beat action. Or maybe it's the wide variety of sizes designed for salmon, trout, walleye, steelhead, mackinac, and more. But just for the record, we know one thing for certain. We didn't design the maglip to catch fishermen. Yakima Bait Company. Now we're pulling up into a little cove here. This is not a spot of ever fished before but it's protected from the wind so we're gonna try it sometimes you just need to fish comfortably and not get beat up by the weather especially when you have kids in the boat we should find some back here though but trout right there so it must be in a good spot <laughs> all right so you guys are gonna each pick out your own size corky and color okay okay so these are the small ones here and these are the big ones here okay so, Bella, why don't you pick first? Do you want small or big? Uh, big. Want to go big? Okay. Which color? That one there? Okay. You like that color combination, don't you? Yeah. And Bella, here's your pole. There you go. Okay. Which one do you want, Aiden? How about, like, you want that one, Fire Tiger? Okay. Yeah, I want Fire Tiger. Okay. And Austin, you want to pick one for yourself? If I had to go small, it would be this one. That one there? Okay. No, what's that one's name? That one there is called Sherbert or Sunrise. Mm. Okay, so here are the colors. So look at the color of Corky you have. Corky. Mm -hmm. And so we got purple and we got, Oops. yep, we want one of these guys here. This, this one. Guy. That's this that one matches here? my Corky. Perfect. Thank you. So let's see. Aiden, let me see your pole. Where do you want to cast? You want to go over there? Okay, got it. Right over here? Let's take a look. How about right there? Look good? This is the first line out in this new spot. And guess what? Start reeling. Mom, Aiden gets a cookie. <laughs> I don't know the hard. Here. Good job, bud. Keep on reeling. Here, reel, reel. Oh, yeah. Okay, stop reeling and lift. Big nice big one. Good job, bud. Aiden, nice that job. Guy. What Good are you job. doing? Making him go sleep. There you go. Now you can see him. What do you mean to sleep? So we put it to sleep so that way it doesn't suffer when it's out of the water. Now these fish, they don't feel pain like you and I do. They feel pressure. So it's kind of the difference between say a pinch Can and I a push. It? So we put him to sleep, we knock him out so that way he doesn't suffer. He's not trying to get Can air. Can hold him? You betcha, here so you go. So is he gonna die like this? He already is. Is it? Yep. Ah! Nice job, buddy. Show okay. me how big do you think the fish is? Oh. Show me all his hands, go like this. Oh, that's a true fish. Yeah. Yeah, we got one. Oh, that is way smaller. Do you get a net it for us? You're welcome. Good job. Nice job, Bella. Here it is. Mm. Check that out. Oh, hey. <laughs> nice job, guys. You want to hold it? Sure. Yeah, I'll hold the pole for you. It's still kicking. Yes? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was kind of bobbing, and when I felt it, I kind of let go. I could pull back because I because on Aiden's he grabbed and then he just tried to take away me. I knew it was there, so I pulled it up and I got one. Oh, well, I guess Aiden, see, they can't bite you that way. Now we're getting closer. We found a spot that's calm, it's out of the wind, but now the wind's swirling because out on the main lake it's white capping. So it's tough keeping the boat straight. And when you're fishing on the bottom, you want your bait sitting perfectly still. So what we're gonna do is probably just beach the boat up on here, push it up on these rocks, and fish close to shore because that's where we caught the first two fish. So don't argue with them. Where'd you cast to? Over there. You sure that was a good idea? That's where we saw that one big fish woman. Over there. 
How's that? Perfect. He's jumping out there. <laughs> Good job. Just start reeling. Oh, he came off. <laughs> Jeez, that's unbelievable. Fish had it so well that the rod was pinned and he was jumping around back there and still came off. Little trout. Good job. We may need the net. Fish doesn't care one bit. Oh, well, oh, it's looking at it. <laughs> yeah! That's one way to catch them. <laughs> hey, whatever it takes keeps kids entertained. <laughs> the little fishy. I want to hold the baby one. Hey, be free, little fishy. Baby deer right there and in the shadow. So I've seen four deer today. And aren't these all vo volcanoes? Uh huh. Here it comes. Get ready. Get ready to net it. Where is it? Oh, it's coming to me. Just keep reeling, Bella. Oh, there it is. Nice net it hauled right into this. Oh, that's a big one too. Uh, probably not as big as mine. Oh, I think that's the biggest one right there. <laughs> okay, get ready to see your fish. Here it is. Hey, cool. You want to hold the line? Nice job. Ooh, it's snapping. Shame. Okay, here you go. Are you hold it. It jerked its head. So that's after death um, movements. <laughs> it, it occurs often. Salmon swim up to 3,000 miles to return to their exact place of birth to reproduce. Well, most of the time. When fishing with young anglers, the best thing to do is focus in on simplicity. So today we're really only using two different style of techniques. The first one that I'm gonna show you is bobber and jig. It's the exact same setup like what we use for steelhead. So what we have is a six to seven foot long rod with a smaller size reel. This one here is about a thousand or 1500 size. And this is six pound maximum ultra green for our main line. Down to our slip bobber, exactly like what we use for salmon and steelhead. And this one here is just an eighth ounce fish field bobber down to an inline weight, eighth ounce as well. And then 18 to 24 inches of five pound ultra green to our little maxi jig. And this is the exact same maxi jig that I use a lot for steelhead, just smaller. This one here is 132nd ounce and you can use them this size or even up to 1 16th ounce. Now what I also do with this jig is add on a little piece 
of Nightcrawler. So instead of running just a plain old bobber and a jig or just a bobber and a worm, I'm adding them both together. And the reason why is because these trout are thieves. They can easily steal your bait without you knowing. So what we do is when we add on the worm onto the hook, just like so, of course it adds a little bit of flavor, a little bit of scent for them. But if they do end up taking that worm off, we still have the jig that they will come back and react to. So they never totally pick us clean. We still have something down there that we can catch them on. The second setup that we're using here today is the exact same rig that we used to use when we were younger, how we all started out trout fishing, power bait on the bottom. Now this setup is pretty similar to what we were using with the bobber and jig. Now the little twist that I have added in for fishing power bait on the bottom is actually a technique that I learned from Buzz Ramsey. So our leader first is anywhere from 12 to 24 inches, depending upon how far off the bottom you want your bait to sit. And especially if you have weeds or grass that you're trying to get your bait above, a little bit longer leader will be helpful. But now that little trick that Buzz showed me, adding a corky right above your hook. But why would you add a corky above your hook? Well, there's actually many reasons for that. One, it allows you to use less power bait. Yes, power bait already floats, but now it can use less power bait so the hook points will stay exposed and get a better hook set on these fish. What that also does is it makes your power bait, power bait sit horizontal in the water column as opposed to straight up and down. And this allows the fish come up and bite that hook a little bit easier too. You get a cleaner hook set on these fish. Now I'm gonna add in some sherbet colored power bait. And again, because we have the cork, we don't need too much of it. Let's take a little bit here and you just wrap it around the hook and just barely enough to get it to float along with that corky so it sits parallel to the bottom. And now we're all set. Buddy. Real, real, real. Hi. You got it. This one's stuck on something. Oh, I've got one on too. Double. Doubles. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Ooh. Up. Oh, bring them away from each other. Good job. Nice job, oh, guys. I made it jump. <laughs> yeah, double. <laughs> <laughs> nice job, guys. Dude, those are big fish too. Look at those guys. Okay, who's is bigger? Okay, just hold them up Mine's next to each other bigger. real quick. I don't know. We're gonna have to put them on the measuring tape, aren't we? Okay, who's is bigger? Uh, Austin. Is twelve and three quarters. Eight is. Mine is twelve and a half. Cause that look. Do you see this line? Thirteen. Aiden wins again. <laughs> Fighting that other one, you got that second fish. And once I saw that rod go, I was like... You were on it? Yes. Bam, got him. You know, the best thing to add to watermelon or honeydew is power bait. Gross. Here's a nice kick. Hey, Lydia, you want to catch fish? Okay, I'm going to put this right here. I think there's one biting. Let's see, can you reel it right there? Or here, I'll tell you what, I'll hold it right here for you. Can you reel? Right there. You start turning that handle. Faster. Oh, it's on. Oh no, it's stuck in the anchor. <laughs> Ready, here it comes. You see it? There's a fishy. Run away. What is that? Is that your fishy? Yeah. Yeah. Lily, say it's Touch sunset. It. Touch it. Lily, say it's sunset. Lily, what's his name? Wanna kiss it? Give it kisses? Oh. You got some fishies? Good job. My favorite part about fishing is spending time with my family and catching the fish. I just like catching them and I like spending time with my mom and I like catching the biggest fish and the most. How big was the fish? 
the fish was that big? I love my fit, fish. I picked those corkies because they're pink and blue, and those are my favorite colors. Today is great because I get to spend time with my family in some river, and I get to be on TV with Cody Herman. What? <laughs> I wanted to say that too. You wanted to say that too? <laughs> Today was a little bit of a struggle just because of the wind and the weather, but in all reality, it's not about catching numbers or size or most or anything else. It was just having a fun day out here on the water with these kids. And what was really cool to see is how they battled through slow fishing. You know, catching a bunch of trout out here, we should have caught 15, 20, but we caught less than 10. But they had a great time out here. It's gonna be a memory that hopefully they will have for years to come. The best advice I can give to folks wanting to take young kids out fishing is to just keep them engaged, keep them entertained. So have them choose the color of lure that they want to use, the color power bait or corky. Ask them what spot we should fish at. Should we fish deep or shallow? Just keep on asking them questions and help them think through exactly what we're doing out here because that will engage them and get them thinking more on their own about how they want to come out fishing next time and what they can do better next time to catch more fish too. These kids, they retain a lot of information so if we can do anything at all to help them start get those wheels turning and thinking about fishing more often, then guess what? They're gonna to wanna to come out here more often and fish with us.